Hello everyone, this is your civil girl and in this video we are going to see about roof truss design. So here this consists of the complete design of your purlins, uh, your load calculations for your purlins and also for your whole truss. And here I am going to do my analysis not using software but using method of joints since it is a simple truss. And I have the complete uh, procedure for everything here with the checks. So let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. And also for this, you will need uh, four codes, IS-800, obviously, because this is a steel design and IS-875 part one, two and three. So coming to the problem, design a simply supported roof truss to suit the following data. No we are only designing the roof truss and not the columns and all. So the span of the truss is 10 meter, spacing is 4.5 meter. So what does spacing mean? So if this is my truss, if I look at the tree, uh, 3D view, it will be something like this. So this is my spacing. This is what they have given as 4.5 meter. And the terrain is category 3, type is fan type truss class is B. All this will be useful when you are calculating your loads for wind calculation and tropography is flat, location is CV that is square by 2 and height uh, height of the eaves above the ground level is 10 meters. So what is eave? Say this is my truss, this is my eave part. So from my ground level it is 10 meter. So basically means the height of the column is 10 meter and the weight of GI sheet, the galvanized iron sheet uh, sheet is what you put on the top of the roof, right? The sulfate is 0.8 uh, kilonewton per meter square, and the purlins are placed at panel points. I'll let you know what are panel points in just a minute. And normal permeability. This is for your wind calculations. So this is my given truss. Okay, so they haven't given me the uh, height. So I'm assuming that if they have given you the uh, all the uh, details, then you can go ahead with them. If not, you can assume the angle. For me, I'm going to take this angle as 30 because it will be easier for my method of joints uh, calculation when I do my analysis. So I'm going to take this as 30. On doing so, I'll be able to get the dimensions of all the uh, members here. From doing that, I'll be able to find uh, the height of the truss since this is uh, 10 meter. Since this is 10 meter, this will be 5 meter. So taking this as 30, my height of the truss will be 5 tan theta, just your normal trigonometry. I'm going to use normal trigonometry and I'm going to find length of all the members of this truss. It is pretty easy. In case you find it difficult, let me know in the comments below. I'll make a video on it. So uh, here we saw that purlins are placed at panel points. So what are the panel points? is wherever uh, my members meet they are called my panel points so i have placed all my purlins so uh, here i'm going to take an angle section angle section means an l section as my purlin i've got the uh, length of all the members here so i'm going to first find the plan area what does that mean so this is my 3d view okay this is 10 meter the span is 4.5 meter and i have found that this hypotenuse is 5.79 meter what is plan plan area means plan area is this area so this is 10 into 4.5 which is 45 meter square and inclined area is this area so it is 4.5 into this hypotenuse which is 5.79 so since i have two of these things on either side I am going to multiply it by 2. So my inclined area is 52.11 meter square. And always note your inclined area will be greater than your plan area. Next is we are jumping straight into the design of purlins. For that we have to first calculate the load that is acting on the purlin. So uh, when you look at this diagram you can see that this is your purlin. And above the purlins only you will place your sheets. That is your in this case it is GI sheets. So the, the dead load that will be acting on this purlin is the dead load of this uh, sheet and also the dead weight of the purlin itself. Keeping that in mind, coming to your load calculation, dead load is GI sheet that is your galvanized iron sheet sulfate. They have given it as 0.18 kN per meter square. I'm going to convert it into newton per meter square. And then uh, I need all my loads in terms of newton per meter. So I'm going to multiply it by another dimension so that dimension here is going to be 1.93 so what is this 1.93 the spacing between my purlins 
this is my 1.93 so when I multiply my Newton per meter square into that dimension I'll get my answer in Newton per meter so this is the sulfate of the GI sheet coming to the sulfate of the Perlin since we haven't already designed the Perlin I'm going to assume it is 100 Newton per meter so when I add them both I'll get 447 I'm going to take it as 448 Newton per meter for simplicity next is live doll calculation for this you have to go to IS 875 part 2 so when you go to page number 14, table 2, you will be able to find this formula. It will be in terms of theoretical. But you, you can be able to easily change it to a formula. If not, just use this formula. This will help you to understand what the theory means. So when you go to table 2, you will have this where alpha is your angle of your uh, slope of your truss. So on substituting, I'll get that my live load is equal to 350 Newton per meter square. So I need all my things in Newton per meter. So I'm going to multiply it by a dimension. Here I'm going to use, for dead load, we use this length because my sheet was in this direction. For live load, since it is going to be acting in vertical direction, I'm going to take this length. So what is this? This is 1.93, this is theta. So this length will be 1.93 cos theta. So on multiplying, we'll get live load on Perlin per meter is equal to uh, 1.93 cos alpha, which will give you 585 Newton per meter. Now coming to wind load calculation. Here you will need IS 875 part 3. Uh, coming to appendix A. For my given location, uh, since I've taken Coimbatore, 2, it is VB is equal to that is the velocity of wind is equal to 39 meter per second now we should not take this you should take your design velocity which you will get after multiplying all these three coefficients k1 k2 k3 they are pretty easy to find if you have your code with you so k1 uh, if you go to page 11 table 1 you'll find table 1 And in table 1, you'll have many types of buildings. So since they haven't given specified the type of building in the question, I'm going to take it as all general building. For that, I have my K1 coefficient to be 1.0. So I found K1 pretty easily. Next is K2. So for K2, I'm going to table 2 of IS 875 part 3. So for that, it, there is also a table there. And my height is 10 meter class B it is given and terrain is 3 uh, they have also given so from this it is pretty straightforward when you look at the table you will be able to find it pretty easily so you will get K is equal to 0.88 in case they haven't given you uh, the type of building that is in case th there are many definitions for class A class B and class C so in case they have given the definition then you have to find what type of class it falls in and then you have to find it but here since it is a pretty much straightforward question I'm going to uh, just go with my answers ready from the table next is level uh, k3 and I have been given in the question that the topography is flat so since it is a level ground my k3 is equal to 1 based on the code I'm going to substitute all those coefficients in my uh, design uh, velocity which is which will give me 34.32 meter per second from this my basic wind pressure formula we all know it is 0.6 into vd square so 0.6 into 34.32 the whole square it will give me approximately 707 newton per meter square so since here it is in newton per meter square you can't just multiply your dimension and get it in newton per meter here you have to take wind coefficients into account so what are these wind coefficients see this is my truss right so trust they are tall structures most of the time they are very tall so wind effect it is pretty critical for them so wind it may either push your truss down or it may push them outwards or it may cause a suction inside there are like so many conditions how wind may act on your structure when it comes to calculating your wind load we take so many precautions to make sure that our load calculation is correct so one such thing is finding the wind coefficients so what are these wind coefficients this is my plan area of my truss so here i'll have my 3d view will be something like this any trusses and your plan will be something like this so i'm going to take two things into account the 
the wind may be either acting in this direction or this direction. I'm going to take this as theta is equal to 0 degree and this as theta equal to 90 degree. So two types of wind coefficients are there. They are internal and external. For normal permeability, they have given it in our question. So for normal permeability, uh, internal wind pressure coefficient is, is pretty much straightforward. It is equal to plus or minus 0 0.2 p. This plus or minus, it depends on the condition. If it is in suction, that is if the wind acting on it in is in suction, then it is negative. If it is causing a pressure, then it is positive. We will see uh, it in detail uh, when we solve the problem. So internal coefficient we have found, external wind pressure coefficient. Uh, for this we have to go to another table, table number 5. And in this table, based on the relation between H and W. So what is H? H is this distance. That is the distance from your ground level to your eaves. This is H and this is W. And since for my problem both are 10, my H by W value is 1. So there are so many conditions there and mine falls under uh, 1 by 2 less than H by W less than 3 by 2, which is 0.5 less than 1 less than 1.5 so mine falls here so i'm going to take that condition and for that condition for an angle of roof uh, for a roof angle of 30 degrees in table 5 is 875 part 3 you you will find these values that is for at an angle 30 for theta equal to 0 degree for this thing you have two things this is your windward side this is your leeward side so for ef it is minus 0.2 for gh it is minus 0 0.5 and for uh, theta equal to 90 degree this is your windward side that is eg for eg it is minus 0.8 and for fg which is your leeward side it is minus 0.8 so it is the same for this thing so let us see how we are finding the pressure coefficient combining both the internal and external wind pressure coefficient in the next video i'll see you guys in the next video it is right after this you can find it in the playlist thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video bye